Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. So um, I've got to plane up some bits of wood to make some tops of my stools. So um, here's how I would go about it. So I've got a bit of wood down, see what I'm up against. And I know straight away without looking at it, it's like I can deal with that rocking. Well, that's nearly going to sit. I just need to knock off a bit of those two corners. So what I'm going to do is do that with a jack plane. And off the opposing corner. Good. So I've got rid of that, which is great. And initially now I'm going to have to work in the centre of this board because as you can see I've got a big old cut board. You can see it's hitting the board slightly irregular here and here. But that's just because it's you know the jack plane's helping to flatten that out. It's dropping away a little bit there. See my wood's doing a bit of a no pants dance there, which is, you know, it's not ideal, but I like to be able to move it around so it's not captive. You can use cramp in the vise, or you can use like a hole fastener a batten, or you can even use just some little bits of wood screw to your bench. But I like to practice as much as possible not using them. And this piece of timber is a piece of um, piece of beach, which isn't bad as a plane up, but it's a little bit above the kind of stuff that you'd see in your average plane demo.
now I'm getting a full cut. It's quite hard work on the plane. But I want to be able to make progress. You know, you can set your plane fine and there's a balance. You, know, you need to be able to push it. dealing with wood like this which is quite badly cut you need to be able to have at it a little bit that's a big improvement a few more swipes in the center but I'll take my metal plane. Again often I would prefer to use a wooden trying plane but here because I'm dealing with something I want to adjust the plane easily as I go and a metal plane of this size is more than adequate to flatten this and um, that's what I'm going to use. Between planes, I've been using that one which has got a cambered iron on it. It's mainly taking a, a cut in the centre section of the plane here. You can kind of almost see it maybe in the mouth of the plane, the fact that it's taken out a little bit more there. Whereas this one is broadly straight across in comparison, so it's taken out a lot wider shaving. And initially, it's just skimming across. bits that have been scalped out. And you can soon tell with your fingers where you are. And you might have noticed that I'm not using a straight edge or winding sticks. Um, you're probably familiar with winding sticks, they're just strips of timber you put down through and you eye along to make sure that the board is nice and flat. The reason I'm not using them here is because it doesn't matter for what I'm making. If you're making a stool, it doesn't have to be perfect. to the edges. It wouldn't matter if the edge isn't completely square. I'm just going to swing that there to get a slightly cleaner cut. Lovely. Same on the other side. Perfect. 
And truth be told, for something like this project I'm working on at the moment, you wouldn't even necessarily have to worry about going to it with a, a metal plane like that for treeing up purposes. It's not necessary. Now, when we're working down to a thickness by hand, what I don't recommend doing is necessary if a project says that, you know, okay, you need to be, say, 40 millimetres, and you've got a piece that would finish 44 with a minimum amount of work, then just finish it whatever's easiest. So I'm going here to just the base of the cupping of the board. I'm setting that as my, my depth. And all I'm having to do is knock off on the edges. And that's how I'd probably approach most of my hand plating tasks, is not to worry too much about an absolute finished dimension, unless the project absolutely called for it, but rather to think how can I minimise the amount of planing I'm having to do. You know, there's nothing wrong with enjoying the process of planing, but at the end of the day, you want to get a piece progressing and in a good rhythm of work, so, you know, it's all balance. So now I've got to concentrate on the on the edges. This is where you start to appreciate picking through good timber, avoiding stuff which is unnecessarily cut. Again, I'm just using up off cuts as they come for these little stalls, so I have put a bit, a bit of work in. But you know, if you're at the timber yard and you can possibly avoid it.
more cleaning up. There we go, from rough to smooth. So some of my big tips would be, is um, if you want to do it by hand, first of all, try and pick out boards that are really, really clean, as much as you possibly can. You, know, you can work with really tangly stuff if you want, but um, in a way, you probably always want to leave that to machines, unless you want to spend a long time with your planes. And if you've got a saw, you know, get your sawing skills good. That's going to help you an awful lot. Um, and don't do any unnecessary amounts of work. If I'm preparing work, I'm not going to hit this with a smoothing plane because I've got to add markings on and all the rest of it just from a sort of trying plane, although it's obviously going to be much shorter than it in a jack plane. You know, do your joinery, leave your smoothing till last. And if, say, a project calls for 40 mil, but you can yield 42, set it to 42 and just reduce the amount of work you've got to do. Um, there's just no need to, to overthink it like that. So yeah, that's what we've done. I hope that was interesting. Build up a little bit of sweat and um, yeah, there we go. Um, and what else was there? Yeah, so there's other ways of holding work. I'm not sure if I discussed it when I was doing it. You could use a clamp in the vise there to hold it. And you could use little kind of wooden blocks around the, the edges, kind of screwed into your bench top as long as you're okay with that. I've got an end vise that I could use, and you probably noticed a few times when I was doing it, it kind of danced around a little bit, but I'd rather keep practicing it so I can keep moving it exactly where I want, and keep my planing, because it starts to get uncomfortable if you're having to lean in too much. So if you've just got a wide board and you're having to throw a plane down, quite a workout whereas if you can move it around you can kind of reduce that that's kind of how I do it anyway but um yeah I'll just take a quick look at the board close so it's nice and clean good sheen coming off of it yeah and I can carry on with my project